Finding fractions in the simplest form, a lot of times people call that reducing fractions. Okay, And there's different ways to do it, but I'm going to show you a way that gives you the, the fraction in the most simplest form, with the smallest numerator and smallest denominator. Because sometimes, like you may have heard, you just divide the numerator and denominator by the same number, and that reduces the fraction. But sometimes that doesn't give you the smallest fraction, the smallest numerator and smallest denominator. We call it in its most simplest form. And on your homework and your work, it's going to ask for fractions in the most simplest form, and this step will do that, or these steps will do that. So let's say I have a fraction, and it is um, 9, um, let's, not, let's not do that one actually, let's say 12 fifteenths, okay? Now what I need to do is, I need to find all the factors of 12 and all the factors of 15. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write 12. Who can tell me some factors of 12? Uh, six, and two. six and two. Yep. Two and six. What are some others? Three and four. Three and four. And what are some others? Twelve and one. Twelve and one. Now let's come down to 15. What are some factors of 15? What are some factors of 15? Marcus. 5, 3, 1, and 15. So 3 and 5, 1 and 15. Are there any other factors of 15 by chance? There aren't, are there? So now what we're going to do is we're going to find the greatest common factor, the GCF. Okay? I had a math teacher say is... We're going to go catch a fish, and that fish is the biggest number. I'm like, what? So don't worry about that part. But which number is a factor of both 12 and 15? There's going to be more than one, maybe. What are some? Megan, three is one of them. Three and three. I'll underline it. What's another one? One. one. That's it, huh? Now, and I'm trying to find the greatest common factor. What's the biggest number? The greatest number that's the same between both of them, between the 12 and the 15. Megan? It's three. Yep, so I'm going to circle three. That's my greatest common factor. It's a factor of 12, and it's a factor of 15. And it's the largest number that, when I say common, common means the same between both of them. So I'm going to take my 12. And I'm going to divide it by 3. I'm going to take my 15. I'm going to divide it by 3. That's what I do. I take my greatest common factor. I divide my numerator by the greatest common factor. I divide my denominator by the greatest common factor. Who can tell me what 12 divided by 3 is? Uh, 4 and 5. It is 4. And you are right. You told me both of them. You said 15 divided by 3 is 5. 4 fifths. 4 fifths is equivalent to 12 fifteenths. If I drew out my pie chart, and I and I and one of them I made 15 pieces and, and I shade in 12, and one I made five pieces and shade, or sorry, five pieces and shade in four, you would see that they're both shaded in. And remember how I told you that fractions are just division problems? If I divided 12 divided by 15 and 4 divided by 5, like in my calculator, my answer would be 0 0.8 on both of them, because they're equivalent fractions of the same. Now, I want to show you one where if we don't do this way, we might get the problem wrong, okay? Watch. Whoa, need to erase all this. Okay, so let's say I have uh, 12... Eighteenths. Now let's just think. Are these numbers even or odd? Or they or there's one one and one the other? Brianna. They're both even. They're both even. And what can you tell me if a number is even? What can you tell me about what one of its factors is gonna be? Two. Two. So what can I do to this numerator and denominator? What can I do to it? I can divide it by what? 
without even having to figure all these factors down here, what can I do? I can divide it by what? What, Ryan? Yeah, yeah I can divide it by two. Because they're even. And I have 12 divided by 2 is 6. And 18 divided by 2 is 9. Boom. And wait, are both of these numbers even? They're not, are they? So I can't divide this by 2. I must be done. This is my fraction in the simplest form. Woo! That was much easier than writing out all those factors. Wrong. Wrong. Remember my little wrong thing? Okay, that's wrong. Even though I was able to divide it, it's not, I don't have the simplest form of the fraction. I need to do the factors. Watch. What are the, oh, we already did the factors of 12, didn't we? We had 1 and 12, 3 and 4, 2 and 6. Who can tell me what some factors of 18 are? What are some factors of 18? 9 and 2. 9 and 2, yep. What's another, what are some other factors of 18? Haley. Um, 18, and one. 18 and 1, yep. What are the, another, what's another one? Marcus? Um, 6 and 3. Yes, yeah, 6 and 3. Are there any more? I don't think so. So let's go through and let's figure out which ones are common. Which are factors of 12 and 18? What are some of them? Nick. One. Yeah, one. Nice and easy. Boom. It's kind of like cheating, but not really, right? You know, we always know it's going to be one. Megan. Three is one of them, yeah. Three and three. What's another one? Six. Yes, six. Is there another one on the top and the bottom? I think there's one more. Haley? Two. Two. Now. Of all these underlying numbers, which one is the biggest, the greatest factor that's in common between this one and this one? Six. Six, yeah. Okay. So what do I need to divide my numerator and denominator by then? What do I do with this six? Haley. You them. Yes, I divide them both by six. So I'm going to erase this two here. Because while two was a common factor, it wasn't the greatest common factor. So I'm going to divide 12 by 6, and I'm going to divide 18 by 6. All right. And what's 12 divided by 6? Who can tell me what 12 divided by 6 equals? 2. What's 18 divided by 6 equal? Ben. 3. 3. Isn't this a smaller numerator and a smaller denominator than that 6 over 9? Yeah, this is the fraction in its simplest form. So you may have heard, you just have to find a number that you divide the numerator and denominator by, and then you reduced it. But we want to find it in its simplest form. The smallest numerator and the smallest denominator. And for us to do that and make sure we do that, we have to drop, write out all the factors first. Then we have to find the number that's the same, the biggest number, the biggest common factor in both the numerator and the denominator. And then we need to divide that numerator by that greatest common factor and the denominator by the greatest common factor. When you do that, you will always get this fraction in simplest forms. All right? Okay.